hello, welcome to Arts Way Out, episode number five. And today uh, we have two guests um, from Tel Aviv and Berlin. Uh, so from Berlin, we have Thomas Zande Giacomo, who is the artistic director of the Zebra Festival. Uh, and from Tel Aviv, we have Yaya Kedar, who is a filmmaker and the creator of uh, Ivrim Project, um, a documentary series about uh, Israelis um, writers and poets. Um, so welcome and thank you very much for being here today with us. Um, and we're going to start with this uh, brief introduction about your projects. So maybe Thomas, you can tell us a bit, a bit about the Zebra Festival and also about what is poetry film. So the Zebra Poetry Film Festival was founded in the year 2002 by the now House for, for Poesy. And uh, it was in this years, uh, it was every two years, so the annual uh, film festival, international film festival, which shows or uh, presents um, short films based on poems, and we called it poetry films. So they're mostly between three minutes and 15 minutes and based on one or more poems. Uh, could be animations or documentaries and uh, experimental films and the poetry film um, so the definition of the of the house of poesy for poetry film is that it should be first a written poem and then it, the, it should be a filmic adaptation of this poem as a short film or more and more they are also long films but uh, we show mostly short films and this was the beginning in 2002 of this festival but a poetry film or films based on poems are older so the first maybe the first uh, poetry film was made in the year 1905 uh, yeah, in in, Amer in New York by in the studios of Thomas Alva Edison Wow. It was a film based on a Christmas poem. It's called The Night Before Christmas. So another adaption of this poem is The Nightmare Before Christmas by Tim Burton. And it's an international festival, right? Right. It's an international film festival. We uh, This year we have, we got 2000 films from over 100 countries. This was really the a record. Before we had, we have uh, between 800 and 1,200 uh, films every two year or every year from all over the world. Uh, this year it was really the, the peak. <laughs> wow. And are they all like they, they have subtitles in English or how do, how do you manage the language? Um, yeah, the the language, the, we, we like to hear the original language because it's poetry, international poetry, and the best way to, to listen to poetry is the, is the language, the original language. And uh, most of the films are subtitled in English. Yeah. So and when we, we screen it and in, in cinema, we ask before to, to subtitle the films in English. Seldom they dubbed it in English. So we like it to hear the original voice and the original language. Okay, great. So we're gonna dive into a few examples in a, in a few minutes. Uh, but before, uh, Yair, can you tell us about your project, how it evolved in time and uh, about the whole idea of making these documentaries? I come from um, um, Hebrew literature studies I was a journalist and an editor and about 10 years ago I began this project and the idea was to find the way to take the life stories of the writers and their, uh, their writings and using uh, various kinds of arts as animation and design and music and put it all together in some kind of artistic biographies which is a way to retell not only the life story of the artist, but to, to get to know his work or her work again. And the first film was with um, uh, uh, 
um, first like a female national poet, Leah Goldberg, who came from uh, um, Russia, spent some time in Berlin and came to uh, Tel Aviv. And from there, the concept began of how I can tell a life story of a person who is not with us anymore. I, I only make films about the poets and writers uh, who died recently or died 400 years ago. How to tell their life story, how to find artistic concept to, um, to show uh, the work, how it's possible to take a poem, to cut it into pieces, uh, to create a codex of uh, images and to use it in art that uses time like like filmmaking and combine it back to, with a biographical story. Uh, each film is a new challenge. It's a concept that is very problematic because each film has to reinvent a new concept. How do I make a film about Leah Goldberg or Bialik, another poet, or about Ishuron, another poet? Um, and I, I produce all the films, I direct five of them, and other films, there's already 14 films, with other directors uh, from different uh, backgrounds and communities and ages uh, that created um, a big variety of films. Uh, and I think th this project allows a wonderful um, form of artistic cooperation between various people each time. How do we attack? How do we explore? Uh, what treasures do we find? What are the challenges in creating a film about a poet? And I, all the time I think, you know, poetry is so small in power and money uh, uh, and every once in a hundred years you make a film about a poet, so we try to do our best. Maybe you can see a uh, first example from the uh, festival. Um, so I've asked you, Thomas, to choose um, I mean, out of the thousands of videos you have, I know it was a difficult task um, to choose uh, a few videos that we can uh, watch together. Obviously, we're going to we're going to put the links online for uh, both by Dream Films and the festival, so people can continue and watch it. Um, so maybe the first video you uh, you want to show us, um, can you please tell us the name and and why did you choose it? And um, and then we're going to see. Steel and Air was one of the winner of the uh, Seabrook Poetry Film Festival in uh, 2000. I think it was 2016, and it's a, a short film based on a poem by John Ashbery, uh, same title, uh, Steel and Air. It's about a bridge in Minnesota, in uh, Minneapolis. Um, and on this bridge is written this poem, and he, John Ashbery, uh, talk uh, uh, in his in this poem about life, about experience in life, and about tiny things in life. And now, I cannot remember. Oh, I would have had it. It is not a conduit. Confluence. But a place. It's a place of movement and in order, it's a place of old order. But the tail end of the movement is new, driving us to say what we are thinking. It is so much like a beach after all. Where you stand and think of going no further. And it 
it is good. When you get to no further, it is like a reason that picks you up and places you where you always wanted to be. This far, it is fair to be crossing. To have crossed. Then there is no promise in the other. Here it is, steel and air. A model presence, small panacea, and lucky for us. And then it got very cool. It's a beautiful film. I find it very, very touching. And also you you start to understand if you don't know what poetry film is about, then you start to understand exactly how this relationship between the image and the world can all of a sudden be a, a new, a completely new creation, which is not just one or the other, but something else. And I think the film is not illustrating the poem. This is very important for us. So it's 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 an, uh, a third thing. So you have one side the film, the other side the poem. But you put it together, and you have a third thing, a new thing. And it's not an illustration of the poem, but it, they play with their own pictures, but leave a lot of space for the poem, for the words in the poem. So it could be completely different. Yeah, it's beautiful. And. Maybe we move, we, we'll do a ping pong like this. Maybe we move to uh, one of your ears examples. Okay, so Yona Bolach is the, the most radical, the most queer, the most, um, uh, one of the most interesting poetess. Uh, she died about 30 years ago. Um, and in the film, it was the second film in the Hebrew, it's called The Seven Ta Tapes, based on the interviews she held before uh, she died. The, the idea was not only to, um, to find, uh, uh, to illustrate or to, to uh, exemplify in an artistic way not only her poems, but also her uh, cognitive processes, also her soul. So we created a language for an inner world and also for a poetry. And sometimes we even mix the um, poems uh, together because she experienced uh, you know, mental, she had very interesting mental words and we tried to, to, to show it. So this is a part when one of her most uh, severe uh, uh, breakdowns actually, and it shows what happened to her and what she, she, she did we do with it in her writing. So we hear her voice and we see some of her work and listen to the music. זה בעצם העולם שדן בחלקים קטנים, באטומים של הנפש, בחלקים מאוד מאוד קטנים של התרחשות, ברציפויות הדוקות ביותר, שאין ביניהם רווח של סיכה אפילו, שבהם באמת אפשר להתחיל להבין את הכלים העדינים והדקים ביותר של המוח, של העצבים שלנו, של התחושות שלנו, של כושר היצירה שלנו, של הגאונות שלנו. ואם אתה לא יכול לעשות את זה, בגלל שהחברה לא מקבלת דברים שאתה כותב, בגלל שחומר מסוים פשוט לא מקבלים אותו. תהיה מתוק, תהיה חביב, תהיה צנוע, תהיה מצועצע, תהיה בובלה, תהיה מוטה, תהיה בובה, נזיז אותך מפה לשם. ברגע שהוא מתחיל להגביל את כוח הכתיבה שלו, אז הבן אדם עובד. תפסו אותי, החליטו שנסי להתאבד, דחפו לי כמה זריקות, השתשו אותי לגמרי, לקחו אותי לבת ים וסגרו אותי שם. שאף אחד לא אותי שם, אז החליטו שאני אהיה לתקן שאני מתאבדת. ליטו אותי בכדורים, בזריקות, בכל מיני דברים שלא ראיתי ולא אהבתי בחיים שלי. הם החזיקו אותי ארבע וחצי חודשים. 
פתאום ראיתי כמה שהיא מפגיעה. כשהיית מאושפזת. כן. פתאום ראיתי, אם אפשר לחטוף אותי לארבע וחצי חודשים, אין לי שום הגנה. ואז הכתיבה נראתה לך כמו הגנה? כן. פרסום, פרסום תהילה, הדברים האלה נראים לך סוג של הגנה? הגנה מרחבית, קראתי לזה כל הזמן. את מרגישה מוגנת יותר כשאת כותבת? לא כשאני כותבת, כשאני מפורסמת. כשאני מפורסמת, כשאני מפורסמת. שלח לי שקט טוב מוגן. שלח לי שקט מענן. שלח לי שקט ממוקן. לשמור. Yona Volach is, I think, my favorite poetess in this uh, project. I grew up uh, reading her poems when I was 15 in a small town, thinking how to get out of the closet. She was my uh, inspiration and my comfort. So when I began to make a film about her, she did something that is very fantastic and very rich and very energetic, and with uh, lots of options and colors and solutions. And of course, we don't have Hollywood budgets. So uh, what was fantastic here that I met a wonderful uh, designer, animator called, uh, named Juboy, which is not only a fantastic artist, but also is, uh, teaches in one of the leading art schools in Haifa. So what we do, we recruited the whole uh, class. So it was 21 students working on the film and him working on the film and two other students make her final work on the film. So we had about 24, 25 people, 25 computers and brains working together to, to reach that uh, result should look. Right. It is beautiful. Um, so maybe we can uh, talk about another example. It's a f film called uh, I Come From. And it, uh, the sentence is I come from Leeds. So there, uh, this is a film made by Alex Ramsayer Batch. Maybe it's a, also a German name, but uh, Alex Ramsayer Batch and Daniel Lucchesi. And the poet uh, is Joseph Buckley. Joseph Buckley is a young poet. He was one of the group of a, a spoken word group who won an award to, and then they moved, they uh, traveled to to Washington D.C. And have there is there was a, then um, the spoken word uh, competition, very well known spoken word competition. But it's a film, it's a documentary about the experience, about their movement, and about their travel to to Washington D.C. And this small film before is it's just an intro of a long documentary, but it shows very brilliant the movement through leads and the words are very strong and it was taken with a special camera the land i think they landed from the bbc they worked together with the bbc i think and it's a, a very slow movement 
the camera movement to the streets of Leeds. And it's um, also the song or poem about how they loved their, the city of Leeds and they are proud to be from, from Leeds. I come from. I come from blood fruit mango, cashews, frozen fish fingers, dirty dishes, and council gas heaters. I come from concrete and coal, spaghetti bolognese and shiny new BMXs, from tea tree oil, marijuana vapors, the damp heat of lawn, directs holy jeans, and molded Mary bottles of made in China, holy water. I come from a world of miniature, of powerlessness, of oversized furniture and scruffy trainers, free steps to mummy's one plastic dinosaurs and power rangers. I come from the motorways, my friend, from the same journey three times a month, like some weary old heart that takes a week to beat, to beat out our old battered blood cell red fear compelling it to crawl over the spinal cord of these British Isles just one more time I come from heartbreak or more formally viewed underneath the withering eye of the divorce court's bisection of these bicuspid valves, the crack in my heart widening into a crevasse. I come from rainbows and thunderclouds, from ladybirds and dragonflies, from fighting with fireworks on streets, Hop, skip, hope to miss the syringes. I come from steel and sandstone, asphalt and coniferous forest. I come from sweat, smell and the invisible world of chromosomes. I come from the warm pouch with umbilical cord. I come from that first prehistoric spark of enlightened consciousness on an East African plain. I come from the dense nuclei flung from the wounds of stars. But in the end, I concede and say the least needed of me. I come from. I come from, I come from Leeds. Uh, I, I just want to say I saw it yesterday and I, I did about a dozen reruns. It's powerful, it's fantastic, it gives so much inspiration, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, work and uh yes it's very beautiful to see it so thank you for uh sharing it and uh thanks <laughs> we move to your example with uh Bote Shuron. Uh, Bote Shuron is of course a fantastic uh, poet and uh, i think the the concept of the field was that the breakings that is all the time he breaks and rebuilds himself and breaks again he broke his uh eastern european uh, identity coming to Israel as an immigrant. Uh, when he lost his parents, he, he went back to his Jewish roots, was a very left-wing, became a very right-wing, uh, was anti-religion, was pro-religious, a person with many, many changes and uh, you know, inner storms. And uh, he also invented some kind of language of his own that uses Arabic, Yiddish, and Hebrew. It's one of the few poets that, that did it. So uh, the director of the film, Chai Hasson, who is also a poet, and me trying to find the, co the visual concept, and we were in a year of a search. And then the idea was, came from influence of some British artist, Erez Gavit, a designer, found this reference um, of how we can break reality. We see reality, we see a street, 
and then using some technique which I do not know nothing about, breaking the thing that we see. <laughs> אמרת כיצד נעשה אדם אבות ישורון? התשובה היא מן השבירות. שברתי את אמי ואת אבי, שברתי להם את הבית. שברתי להם את לילות המנוחה. שברתי להם את חגיהם, את שבתותיהם. שברתי להם את ערכם בעיני עצמם. שברתי להם את הפתחון פה, שברתי להם את לשונם, מאסתי את היידיש, ואת שפת קודשם לקחתי ליום יום. מאסתי עליהם את החיים, יצאתי מן השותפות. וכאשר ירדה עליהם שעת האין מוצא, עזבתי אותם בתוך האין מוצא. I really liked it. I like it, yeah, you know, you have the, the whole atmosphere of the movie already in the beginning, and then you're, you're there. You know, you're, you know in what context you are, and your, your heart is already tuned to the right place. So, um, I, and, and the visuals are really, really beautiful. Um, so maybe we talk a little bit about uh, how these past months have uh, influenced your work. Uh, since this uh, COVID-19 um, uh, crisis appeared. Um, how did it change your, your creation, your plans? What happened? Uh, so maybe Thomas, you want to start with the festival? So first, uh, we planned to, to, to make the festival um, as a hybrid festival, hybrid festival. So we would like to show something in the on in online, but mostly most things in a, in a cinema and also in the schools. And we plan to, to we organized everything, the, the cinema and so. And in the last minute, uh, we have to change completely. We canceled the, the cinema because in Germany there was the, another so-called light lockdown but it was a lockdown for the cultural uh, world so every museum was closed every cinema was closed theater and so on and then we changed and to uh, to make an online edition and then we also uh, put the competition online and all, the whole programs are now online on video well uh, and what about you Yay? how did the past month uh, work for you uh, my new film is about uh, the writer Amos Oz, and it's, I'm finishing the film shortly, and it will be uh, shown, I think, next uh, spring. So I finished shooting in February, just before COVID, but, but at the same time, I had to, uh, the concept of the film, and I'm sharing you something which is raw material, and I shouldn't share, but I will still share. The concept of the film is a writer sitting near the window and sees life on the street passing by. Possible to shoot now live on the street because everybody's wearing masks and almost all died before COVID. So what I had to do was close down a main avenue in Boulevard in Tel Aviv and to hire actors that were supposed to be innocent bypassers and create very, very gentle scenes. I hope we can see it in the cinema with people. And, and what are your future plans now, Thomas? Now that the, I mean, once you finish uploading the festival and you go on vacation? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're still talking about the next festival. We are planning the next festival uh, because we have to open the submission, um, yeah, latest in February. 
So we have a new festival poem, one poem which is online on lyricline.org and we will publish this uh, festival poem and invite other filmmakers, international filmmakers to make a filmic adaption of this poem. So we have to ask the poets uh, and also which would be maybe we, we talk about the next uh, country focus which would be the next focus land on the festival so we are planning the next festival now and it's you, you, you we're not finished with one festival but we are in the next festival <laughs> But it would, we hope we hope we can get can back get back in, in into the cinema because we have really beautiful cinemas here in Berlin and they have they have to close because it was a really difficult situation for them before COVID. Uh, with COVID, it's now really a bad situation. So I was in Tel Aviv and I was in a hotel which was before uh, uh, a cinema which uh, is in the middle of um, of Tel Aviv. It was beautiful. Uh, cinema like in a Bauhaus style so a little bit but we have also uh, a, a cinema in Berlin from this from this uh, years and old cinemas and we love to 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 invite to come to, uh, to invite the filmmakers and the poets to come into the cinema for this is a this for a film festival the the, the real situation to talk with poets with uh, with filmmakers and festival makers yeah Thomas, I think you have the best, uh, one of the best uh, uh, jobs in the world. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I think it's really good, a great job. But I have to say, I, I, we have also a focus on Israel. So really? years before, I was, yeah, I was uh, talked to, to a, a filmmaker from Tel Aviv and he had the idea. And then we made the, it was a small idea uh, on breakfast <laughs> and it turns out as a as a workshop <laughs> with uh, six or more films and we called it poetic encounters and we made this uh, films together with german poets and filmmakers from tel aviv they are still online the films and there's also a documentary about this uh, uh, films maybe sometime in the future we'll try to uh, have a second cooperation with israel with well, yes. We do another focus <laughs> on uh, Israel and vice versa, by the way. Yes. A very vivid community mm -hmm. here, a lot of filmmakers, a lot of talents. Yes. Um, I know. Yeah. We have also two great, really exceptional, three, I think three exceptional um, uh, animations on the also on, on the competition at the competition and also on the program. It was a new experience to see the, the new talents of uh, Israel uh, animation filmmakers. So it's a new form and also spoken word. Mm -hmm. It's very strong. Yes. Yeah. This year, the, um, uh, we celebrate 55 years of diplomatic relations between Germany and Israel. Mm -hmm. So maybe mm -hmm. this could be a good occasion uh, to uh, seed this uh, seed of collaboration um, between uh, Israel and Germany again in this domain of, uh, uh, of films and animation. Uh, I think um, it's, it's a good moment always in these occasions, right? Um, and maybe even today, since everything is going online and then borders don't have that meaning and all the money you spent before on tickets and hotels, uh, we can use for these mm. uh, international collaborations. So uh, I really hope, uh, yeah, we can, can think of something uh, together one day or have another uh, yeah another israeli presentation in the festival it will be great i think this talk will continue yes to mm. continue thank you so much for this talk um i really enjoyed it and um i wish you all luck with your future uh, projects and i'm following uh, the future collaboration to come <laughs> and um yeah have a um, yeah, no, it's almost the end of the year, so I hope you, we have a happy new uh, 2021 with lots of uh, open cinemas and culture and... Yes, 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 yes. Right. <laughs> We need it. Thank you very much. It was great meeting you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation and the talk. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.